And welcome to the Ladies Professional Bowlers Tour on ESPN. Tonight, I'm trying for my first title, so stay tuned. ESPN and the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour present the championship round finals of the Hammer Midwest Open. Tonight's number five qualifier, Wendy McPherson Papanos, is having a very consistent year and is currently ranked second on the LPBT's high average list. Her opponent in match number one is the current United States Open champion, Dee Dee Davidson. It's truly been a comeback year for Lisa Wagner, who is holding down the number two position on the tour's point standings. And in the runner-up slot tonight, with an average of 227.4 this week, talented Stacy Ryder. And of course, leading the field after 42 games here in Rockford, Debbie McMullen looking for her first ever LPBT title. Welcome everyone to Don Carter Lanes, located in Rockford, Illinois. Good evening, everyone. I'm Denny Schreiner, along with two-time champion Leila Wagner, and we're at the home of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour, Rockford, Illinois. And this time of the year, you and I always start to chat about Player of the Year honors. Three players on the show tonight have a chance. Well, Denny, how many times do we emphasize the fact that the ninth frame in a match is the setup frame? This particular event is the setup event for that Bowler of the Year race. Lisa Wagner, if she was to win here tonight, she would win two titles for the year. She would take over the lead in money and also the lead in points. Dee Dee Davidson already has the U.S. Open title this year, and Wendy McPherson with one title is having her best year ever. A little bit later on in the telecast, we'll actually take a look at the top ten players who we feel have an outside shot to win Player of the Year honors, but let's move up the ladder now to our number one and number two seeds. We're talking about Debbie McMullen and Stacy Ryder, both players really looking to win that first title. Oh, they are, Denny, and I have to tell you, they have knocked on the door many times, and if these two players are in that title match, then we're going to see one happy player at the end of the night. They'll go home with a wonderful feeling winning that very first singles title. This was a record-setting event in terms of scores. You had to average 225 to get to the top five here tonight. The ladies threw plenty of strikes here this week. They did, and they broke the all-time qualifying record here this week. Danny, if we see strikes like they've been thrown all week, you're going to be tap dancing at the end of the night. Well, I know how to do that. We've done that a few times in the past. Should be an exciting telecast. We are ready to start match number one, featuring a pair of very outstanding players, Wendy McPherson Papanos and Dee Dee Davidson. And we're ready for the start of match number one, championship round pair, lanes seven and eight. Wendy McPherson, really a steady year, consistent year, uh, plenty of top ten finishes. And we just saw her two weeks ago in Pittsburgh making the telecast. She's obviously hoping to improve on that performance, was lost that night a little bit. Well, if you recall, that was the night that the, the lanes really did appear quite different than they had been all the week. Uh, Cheryl Daniels, the tournament leader, had also mentioned that fact that she did not feel that uh, the lanes were at all similar to what they had been all week. When they averaged 223.5 on this pair of lanes throughout the week, uh, the top five averaged about 227. Stacy Ryder was the big hitter on this pair, though. She averaged better than 250. Completely different lane surface here at Don Carter Lanes than the ladies have seen in the past. Denny, Don Carter Lanes has put on a, a guardian finish. It's right on the surface that goes right on top of the uh, original wood, the original lane. It provides a very smooth plane surface. It's an artificial uh, lane or uh, surface. Synthetic variety as uh, Dee Dee Davidson makes an aggressive shot in the first frame and throws it right through the nose. Dee Dee Davidson uh, trying to overcome a cold. She says, I've been feeling terrible the past couple days, and I know there's been many times in the past where I have felt bad that I've pulled uh, extremely well. Take a look at uh, Dee Dee Davidson's approach. She takes a five-step approach. Starts the ball out on her second step. And her third step, watch here. She's in perfect position. Now she's coming up through her backswing is very high. And as she releases the ball, she's one of the most powerful players on the tour. A little more room on the left-hand lane. Very fine comeback shot after the open frame in the first. 
According to the right-handers, Denny, lane eight hooked more for them than lane seven. It'll be interesting to see. Apparently, Dee Dee Davidson also found that to be true. So it seems as she went through the nose on eight and struck on lane seven. Another good shot by Wendy McPherson Papanos, and she has her first strike of the evening. Wendy McPherson Papanos takes a four-step approach, a very basic game, puts the ball low and out on the first step. Take your look at the second step. The ball is completely down. Nice high backswing. And as she follows through, there's a nice long slide. Has an opportunity to take advantage of an open frame by Dee Dee in the first. If she strikes here, she's up by 21. So she would seize the early lead. And instead of the seven pin, this time it's the 10 pin. And she appears to have a shot to the pocket, Denny. I think most of the players in this tournament had a shot to the pocket this week. Well, actually, Wendy uh, made a big move after the first couple rounds. Uh, she said, I, it was my timing, though. I, I could get to the pocket at times, but I was really lost. She qualified 24th, made a big move in the finals. <laughs> Dee Dee taking one of two re-racks. She is allowed for game. 26 years old. Nine years as a professional, and she told me she wanted to thank her newly acquired sponsor, Dr. Larry Tatori. Just picked her up about three days before the fall tour. She said, I was without a sponsor. She said, I really want to thank him because it's relieved the pressure, the financial pressure that's applied to these players. It's interesting because some players really need that security of knowing that they've got a paycheck each and every week and they then have a percentage of their earnings at the end of the year or at the end of the segment. Other players say, hey, I'm betting on my own ability. If I go out there and excel and I make the money, I want to put it in my own pocket. And many times when you really have to bowl well, it works two ways also, Denny, that you do perform because you're hungry and sometimes you get a little too comfortable. I, uh, I know I don't have the same drive as I had uh, years ago when I was really hungry. Most of the years you played on the tour, did you have a sponsor? No, other than my did. father. Right. My, my father backed me the first couple years, but... After that, I was on my own. A couple of great shots. So Dee Dee Davidson has climbed right back into the thick of this match, and she leads now by nine after an open frame. So it's been strikes in the second, third, and fourth for the current United States Open champion, Dee Dee Davidson. Good opening match right now. Very good, very close as Dee Dee Davidson right now can again take the lead by eight, but must have this strike. Looked to me like she might have sent that one a touch too far to the left, but it came roaring back. Which you sometimes call an area check. Mm. She can create the area, and she's got velocity to go along with it. Dee Dee Davidson has had a lot of success here in Rockford, Illinois. She's finished third in 89. That event was held at Cherry Bowl. Fifth in 88 here at Don Carter. And fourth in 87. Also here at Don Carter. So she really likes this area, Tam. Got a little too confident with that shot. And uh, her opponent has fared well here in terms of how she's qualified. She led this event both here and at Cherry Lanes, although Wendy McPherson has never won. She lost both times in the top spot. That's right. Through the years, it's been a tough tournament to win. Lori Nichols was the first and only repeat champion, isn't she? She was, and she's won this event three times. Yeah. She mentioned the shot on lane eight. She went a little wide. This one, way too wide. Never had a chance. Nice conversion. She leads by five, but Wendy back up on a lane that she has not missed on thus far tonight, lane number eight. Big turning point here, Denny, in the fifth frame when Dee Dee Davidson left that solid eight pin. That would have given her six strikes in a row. And no carry this time as she leaves the soft ten. The ball hit like right mid pocket. Wendy not crossing a lot of boards, playing the lanes pretty tight, going from around 12 to eight. When she leaves these soft tens, the ball could be just sliding a little too long in the conditioner before it makes the break into the pocket. She has really a, uh, 
a very simple game. Not a lot of moving parts involved, and she, she never really gets into too much trouble. She's always around the pocket. Talked about some of the great past champions and how tough it is to win here in this event. Girls always get keyed up for it. There you see Lori, 86 and 87. And of course, again, later on, another solid 10 pin. I think this is perhaps... Uh, what we're going to see most of the night, do you think? Players hitting the pocket and uh, and just trying to carry. Most definitely. You're going to have some player that's going to be able to come out here and carry the light hits, carry the high kit, hits, and also the tens. Wendy really thought that one was going to carry. Good Excuse shot. Me. Cross lane. Covers the ten for Wendy McPherson. If she would strike out, it would be a game of just 218. And Dee Dee Davidson still has room for 235. All of a dad called over because uh, Dee Dee Davidson is asking for a third re-rack, and she gets it. Don't forget the final stop on the 1993 LPBT Fall Tour, Samstown for the Samstown Invitational. It is the, uh, the big event to finish up the season. And, of course, it's on air Tuesday, November 23rd, beginning at 11.30 p.m. Central Time, $20,000 to the winner of that championship. And Dee Dee Davidson coming up high on lane eight. She can shoot a possible 223 with a spare here and three strikes in the 10th. Right now, Wendy McPherson can only shoot 218. So Dee Dee Davidson has destiny in her hands. Make the spare, get a double and some count and you get a chance to move on. Changes spheres for the spare. No problem there. Two strikes and six. And she'll take on uh, the great one, Lisa Wagner. And then it's on to Stacy Ryder and our top seed, Debbie McMullen. Wasting no time. She barely got set up on that shot. Oh, looking to carry the six pin. She's talking to the spinner on the deck. Didn't look like she was that crazy about that effort. Spare here and a strike gives her 212. So Wendy McPherson's going to need a double and count. Well, that's all that Wendy McPherson wanted was a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a high scoring condition. There are probably a lot of matches where you get closed out, you don't do anything but pick up the ball and head to the next pair. Dee Dee Davidson looking to win Sam's Town. That would give her the Triple Crown. She won the U.S. Open this year. She won the Queen's event in 1991. And again, she's asking for her fourth re-rack of the match on lane eight. She does not like this rack. Oh, I take that back. I'm sorry. Lane seven. Trying to slow down just a little bit. Make a good shot here. If she strikes, it'll be a double and five for Wendy McPherson. And the good news for Wendy, it'll be on the right-hand lane, which has been the better of the two lanes for her. Yes, it has. Boy, really a good shot. She probably wants that first one back, the first one in the tenth that went high, and she left the sixth pin. But now she just has to wait and watch. And Wendy McPherson Papanos through the ears. Very good in the situation as she also looks for a re-rack. How much of an effect does that have on you mentally, Leila, when you stand up there and you're not real crazy about the way they look? Well, you definitely need to take the time to re-rack, Denny. Some players will just go, well, you know, should I or shouldn't I take the time? But you should take the time get up there with a clean mind. Other players take re-racks just for a little extra time. Got to start with the first one. And she gets it. Boy, was that a nice shot. Beautiful. And as we mentioned, lane eight being the better of the two for Carrie, for Wendy McPherson. She's playing right between the second and third arrow. Little belly, maybe hitting around the eighth, ninth board. Ball makes nice break. Ten pins all in the pit. She'd like to have that one over right now. Instant replay. Well, it bounced on her. 
Too much loft, two pin stands, and Wendy McPherson can't quite come up with the double. So a good opening match, but she will lose to Dee Dee Davidson. Very disappointing, I know, for Wendy McPherson. Not a clean shot, probably squeezed the ball a little bit, really wanted to win. Yeah, you can tell. Sometimes the arm swing changes. That was the first ball that we saw really loft and bounce the entire opening match. Dee Dee Davidson realizing that she got away with one there. And she'll move on to match number two. Ready for the start of match number two from Don Carter Lane. Dee Dee Davidson, Lisa Wagner. Whoever wins this match takes on Stacy Ryder, and then the winner of the semifinal will face our top seed, Debbie McMullen. See if Dee Dee Davidson can calm her nerves. She looked up after the first match, held out her hand. She's shaking. Why, I'm not so sure. She's been in this position many times. 26 career television appearances. You know, it's funny, though. Some players just never really get used to the, the intensity of a championship round appearance. Well, you can tell when she gets a little nervous, she picks up her speed, her timing gets a little off, she sends the ball a little left. Pretty good shot there, left with the six pin. She was talking to it. <laughs> I think that was an error. <laughs> you know, you just never know what Dee Dee's thinking about. <sighs> Sometimes. No, I'm not going to say it. You wonder if Dee Dee's thinking, and uh, I know she'll appreciate that. Because she's a lot of fun. Well, the point I was making is that she reacts to every shot, good or bad, which is fun. I mean, most of the players are so professional about how they handle their emotions. It's nice to see somebody that wears it out on the sleeve. Oof, almost a bad break for Lisa Wagner to start this match. Interesting the way she has approached this pair of lanes. I watched her pretty closely in practice, and she is definitely swinging the ball and going right with it. Well, it, it definitely appears that there's less oil on the outside part of the lane, Danny, and if the players hit the dry area a little too quick, it's going to hook up early on them. So what they're trying to do is move left, keep the ball in the oil a little longer, find the optimum breaking point of the ball to get it to the pocket. Here is an impressive list of credentials. Phenomenal career so far. 32 years old, 14 years as a professional, 27 national titles. That's almost two a year. And more than any other woman professional player. Really, as you mentioned, the comeback year so far this year. She's been in 15 tournaments and she's cashed 15 times. She's made five television appearances. I said, Lisa, what was the key? So, you know, I went to a five-step approach with the help of Ted Thompson. I went back to my basics, the four steps, when I ran into trouble, and sometimes that's what you need to do. Go back to your basics. The other side of that story, too, is it's just plain good, hard work. She has really worked intensely at her game over the last couple of years because she wasn't happy with what happened. Well, it's difficult to be on top, be the dominating player for so long, the bowler of the decade of the 80s, and then all of a sudden it was, where was Lisa Wagner? And I think it's testimony, too, when you see what she's done, that uh, she's overcome the changes in conditions, uh, age a little bit to a certain degree. She's been out there a long time, traveling, uh, working on the road, which is not an easy thing to do, to stay motivated. Exactly. And also the equipment. You know, things have changed a lot. Some players are, are not able to move from one era to the next, and that's, in essence, what she's doing right now. One great player of all time, Dick Weber. Yeah, <laughs> Has he been mind. able to right. move one, from era to era? Five decades. Right. Professional titles in five decades. I mean, that's just absolutely astounding when you think about it. Down by four. And oh. this time the six pin trips out for Dee Dee Davidson. That should loosen her up a little bit. Let's take a look at the pin action here. The ball's going to come up a little bit high. She's going to leave a solid six. Head pin off the wall. Says, okay, I'll come back on the deck and knock it over. Yes. <laughs> like I said, you certainly have a pretty good feel for what she's thinking. I think she would be wearing a mic tonight if she had a voice. She really was hoarse when I spoke to her earlier. Uh-oh. Tried to compensate a little bit uh, for that high hit on lane 
eight in the opening frame. But uh, even Lisa Wagner can't hook the ball quite that much. <laughs> Got away from her. Left with a tricky one, two, eight. This isn't an easy conversion. No, it's not. But with a mounted conditioner in the center of the lane, Denny, I don't think she'll have any problems. She'll go pretty straight and direct at the pins. Players had quite a bit of hold this week. Obvious with the high scores. You have to have something out there. A little hold, a little room to the right. Oh, what are you talking about? They're all <laughs> that good. They're all 225. No? Danny. <laughs> Don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> uh, I'm biting my tongue. Boy, that hurts. Lisa trying to strike for the second time on the left lane. Another good shot, Beautiful. and another strike. So for her, well, she's been high and missed the pocket to the right on eight. I have a feeling the next time on eight, she'll be right there, whether or not she'll carry. That's the question. Well, in practice, she did tell me that eight for her was hooking at least three more boards. So we may see a high light uh, ball reaction from Lisa until she can get locked in on it. Dee Davidson trying to cool off just a little bit. Strike here will heat things up. Left the bucket the last time. She's closing in on the pocket. Did not get quite the rotation on that ball, Denny. It appeared I, I heard it drop off her hand. Uh, lofted it out a little farther, but uh, not the rotation to get the ball back. She was right in the general area with the line. That's why it did not make it up to the pocket. career titles as you've already mentioned the WIBC Queens and the United States Open she is now in search of a Samstown Invitational crown which would give her the triple crown Dee Dee Davidson has no titles from this number four position either or the number three her titles have been from that number one top seed position well, she's the kind of player that has the kind of talent that when she gets locked into a certain type of a tournament or condition in a house, she's going to run and hide a lot of times. She's going to be first or second. And taking a look at this last shot. Coming up light, head pin off the wall, just misses taking out the 10 pin. The ladies have been around the pocket here in the first couple of games, but nobody really has strung the strikes together. You might not have to tap dance at the end after all. Well, and that, I'm thinking, would probably be a blessing. It's been a while. You're not Gene Kelly, huh? No. <laughs> Fred Astaire? No. Was he tap dancer? No, he wasn't, but I, like, that's oh, why I said Gene Kelly first. Didn't he? Right. Just trying to see if you can dance. Right. Oh, yeah. All of us Catholic point guards can dance. Are you kidding me? That's how you get to the foul line. Uh-oh, look at this shot. Wow. See? All I had to do was say that she was going to make the adjustment and hit the pocket on the right-hand lane, and I gave her the major jinx. Well, I know what she's doing, Denny. When she moves right, the ball's hooking a little too early on her. So what she's done is she's moved left, and now she's trying to project it out to the dry to get it to hook back. But she is going to either uh, need to make some type of a ball change here on lane eight, maybe something a little bit more, more surface, a little duller, that'll hook a little earlier for her, and she can move in. Flirted with disaster, not quite the way she picked up the 128 the last trip, but she's pleased that they're all gone. And a look at the spare, not exactly textbook, but the head pin managed to take out the A pin at the last moment. Lisa leads by five, primarily because of count. Still waiting for one of these players to kind of wrestle the momentum in this one. Well, fortunately, though, no one has opened, and uh, that's what's keeping both of them in the match. Lane seven, Lisa likes. Other than that, shot right there. She's not going to like that eight pin too much. Takes a minute, stops, and talks to it a little. Solid eight pin. Watch the five pin. It's supposed to hit the eight pin. Goes right straight back. Hmm tough break and she's like come on there ought to be a law against that 
Well, we saw D.D. Davidson leave solid nines in the first game. All right, when we come back, we'll find out. Will it be Lisi or Lisa or Didi to move on here in match number two? Both players made the necessary adjustments. They did. Didi came back and said, I remembered to move. Usually helps in a match. Solid pocket shot. Then she crossed over on lane seven. Ball going out to about the sixth board, breaking back nicely for the double. That was in the sixth and the seventh, and then Lisa Wagner finally figured out the right-hand lane. Great shot here. She's swinging the ball, keeping the ball a little tighter around the ninth board, makes a great break back. Again, on lane seven, we saw her leave that solid eight pin in the sixth. Would have given her a 14-pin lead. She now leads by four pins. Back to action in the eighth frame with Dee Dee Davidson. And she takes the lead if she strikes here. And this is not a tennis match. <laughs> oh. Pulling the ball, not sending the ball out. Dee Dee's got the room to the left, but uh, when she gets a little tight, she tugs it and it doesn't appear that she has the hold to hold it on a shot like that not going to be a difficult or it's not going to be an easy spare Ooh, a chop there eight out on a double that's a big problem for her in the eighth frame as she asks for a re-rack on lane seven and as i tried to get that out i was mentioning it's not going to be an easy spare very difficult conversion right here as she chops the two and the eight clean off the four pin mm, no reaction at all there other than to say I think I might have just given this match away. Exactly. And we get to see it again from a different angle. Can't get it off any cleaner than that. Possible 207 if she strikes out, but uh, knowing Lisa Wagner the way we do, you don't win 27 times by letting people off the hook. Well, also Lisa finishes up on lane seven, Denny, and she has not had any problem on that lane this game. Another good shot, another solid six pin for Dee Dee Davidson, who appears to be earmarked for a fourth place finish, although you never know. Stranger things have happened. That's right, we've called them wrong before. Oh. <laughs> One mistake for Dee Dee Davidson in the eighth frame, and it was on a double, so it was a critical stage in the match. Now let's see if Lisa Wagner can find the pocket again here on lane number eight. After missing the head pin on two consecutive shots, she threw a great shot in the seventh frame. Well, she's making the necessary adjustments. She was not comfortable on lane eight in practice. And it's not a good feeling to come out and try to start a match anyway. More speed, tighter line, and a strike. Really a nice shot. Well, she didn't change equipment, Denny, but she did move in. She's keeping the ball tighter. She's not trying to swing it out to the right. Leading by 32 and ready to put the finishing touches here on a victory in the second match. Can shoot 239. Right now, Dee Dee Davidson can only shoot 197. Lisa needs a handful on this shot, and she'll move on to face Stacy Ryder. Interesting. In 1989, Lisa... Stacy Ryder and Dee Dee Davidson all made the show. It was here in Rockford, but it was at the Cherry Bowl. They've moved the tournament from those two sites off and on through the years. This is the 21st event here in Rockford for the ladies. Lisa adding it up and realizing that she's already moved on here, so spare it up and throw the fill ball. Lisa Wagner with a win later this evening. The big one from Lake Zurich. Brunswick Deer Park Lanes, the Brunswick Memorial World Open. You won't want to miss that one. Don't forget, coming up Friday, November 19th, the Franklin Funds Shark Shootout. And that would probably be the number one seeded team right there, Davis Love and Tom Kite. I sure would hate to face those two guys in a team competition. 
Meanwhile, it's singles action here as Stacy Ryder comes out, throws it a touch wide, and leaves a two pin. And as you mentioned, singles action. Denny Stacy Ryder has won two national doubles titles, along with Anne Marie Dugan. However, she is still in search of that first singles title. And it's been kind of a tough year for her, Leila. There was some thought of giving up the tour, staying home, working, changing occupations, uh, but she's got that competitive bug, and I, I think anybody that's come out here and bowled as long as Stacy has, they don't want to quit this thing without a title. It, it just means that much. Now she's been on tour six years, and yes, you're right. She went home and actually got a job, and then she uh, bowled in the U.S. Open and finished fifth, and Whenever you bowl well, you want to keep doing it. When you're bowling bad, you want to quit. Game will drive you crazy. <laughs> it will. Lane breakdown for Lisa Wagner. Pretty close. We saw that she had problems with lane eight first half of the game. Now she's got it figured out. Stacy Ryder probably realizing that, too. You know, Lisa's probably only going to get better on this pair of lanes. And at this point in time, I really wish John were up here making this announcement himself, but uh, I'll let you kind of extend uh, the greetings here in terms of what the gentlemen at Samstown have done for the ladies. Well, just a wonderful break for women's professional bowling. They have just signed a $3 million deal with Samstown over the next three years. The lowest paying event next year for every event will be a minimum of $50,000. The following year, 60, the following year, $70,000. This is just a wonderful thing for women's professional bowling to draw more players out, more excitement. And it might even force me to practice a little uh -oh. bit and get out there too. Yeah, those dollar <laughs> figures are on the rise. You know, Samstown has just been a wonderful sponsor through the years, just in terms of the events that they held out there. But now they are the umbrella sponsor of the national tour here for the ladies and uh, i think it's a terrific relationship between two groups that really i think will be able to utilize one another and go on to bigger and better things that man right there is very happy about the deal as well the chairman of the board of the ladies pro bowlers tour john summer who just so happens to be the proprietor here at don carter lanes as well but I'll tell you what it's been a long hard road for a lot of good, hardworking, talented people. And, uh, you know, those those two guys there, Falzone and Summer, have been grinding on this thing for a long time. And uh, I guess it just goes to prove that if you hang in there long enough, persistence pays off. Well, they took over the tour in 81. And as you mentioned, it's only 12 long years until they finally got this big break. And uh, I know the players have worked very hard also, and this is something that everyone is just truly excited about. This year when they go to Samstown here next week, that's uh, going to be a fun week for everybody involved then. You bet. Great shot by Stacy Ryder, who strikes in the third. Lisa Wagner started with a double. Leads by 11. Debbie McMullen needs to bowl and win just one game for her first title. You imagine if you'd have to face Lisa Wagner to do that? You'd remember that match. <laughs> I do remember facing Lisa Wagner for a title. Hard to forget that. She beat me. <laughs> Except I was, I think I was seated sec second at the time, and she was the top seat. <laughs> well, don't feel bad. She's won 27 times. She beat a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> on numerous occasions. <laughs> Representing uh, Fabal Enterprises. Big turnout there. The gentleman on the far right, Dennis Baldwin, the proprietor at Country Club Lanes. And uh, they sponsor an event every year, and he does at his own place. Hammer sponsors, what, three tournaments every single year? Al Brendel next to Dennis Baldwin, West Pie. And actually on the other side of Dennis Baldwin is John Wonders, who I've known since the, the very first event that uh, Hammer has ever sponsored. And, and they have just been truly, truly wonderful supporters of the LPBT. And there's John Wonders. And he is the president of Fab All Enterprises. And uh, we the... are missing Earl Widman, which yeah. uh, we're sorry to say his wife had a, another stroke, and we miss him. And uh, we hope everything is going to turn out for the best. He has had a very rough ride the last couple of years himself with some physical problems, and uh, we want to send along our sentiments, all of our prayers and thoughts uh, to the Widman family, because right now is not a good time for them, very difficult time, so we're just going to hope for the best. And right now, Stacy Ryder, trailing by 21, is hoping to turn this next shot into a turkey.
Stacy Ryder trying to cut into this lead. Direct needs a swisher and she gets it. Shakes up the pins and strikes in the fifth. Throwing the ball very well, very aggressive tonight. Stacy Ryder has only appeared on telecast 12 times, and I don't mean only, but uh, you know, she's had trouble in the past really winning and being aggressive, and uh, I think now she's got a new outlook. Five in a row. Oh, beautiful shot. Swishes the five pin. Actually threw that one a little farther right, Denny, but uh, she's got the area. And with a little more loft. Well, anytime you see a player smile like <laughs> that, they know that they've found something. And let's talk about the loft. Loft, there you see it, uh, out on the lane. But again, the ball out all the way to about the seventh, eighth board. Now, she has not swung the ball out that far and got it back so far that we've seen. She didn't think it was going to make it either, but <laughs> it was like, whoops. <laughs> like I said, that's a look at the cat after they've swallowed the mouse. <laughs> when we caught her, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Ball much tighter. This one doesn't quite strike, but a five-bagger and a big lead for Lisa Wagner. Stacy Ryder studying the board, but Stacy's on a double, and as many strikes as she can throw, this one's far from over. And before we get too far into this or off the air tonight, we want to wish Renee Fleming a quick recovery. She was in seventh place after 12 games, had to have an emergency appendectomy. And she is right now in the hospital here in Rockford. We'll be out tomorrow and road to recovery. All right. We'll come back. Lisa Wagner leading by 20 here in the semifinal match of the Hammer Midwest Open. And we're slightly behind our time constraints here for our 90-minute telecast. A big, well, a big problem in the sixth frame for Stacy Ryder. Threw it through the nose, left a split, then struck in the seventh. And uh, it's almost like the last game. Dee Dee Davidson had the big open down the stretch and opened the door for Lisa Wagner. And uh, if you don't want to open a door for a player, this is the player you don't want to do it to. Lisa Wagner will just take advantage of any door that's open. Shoulder dipped a little bit, and she's left now with the bucket on the left-hand lane, lane number seven. Trying to play tight, but uh, again, a lot of conditioner in the center of the lane. You keep it too tight, the ball's not going to uh, break back into the pocket. And uh, it's pretty light down there. A lot of laughing going on. Uh, I don't know if she heard the phone ring. I, I sort of heard it. <laughs> You know, one thing, the dinner bucket is no laughing matter. No, it's not. Not unless you make it. <laughs> Fortunate, to say the least. <sighs> Hitting on the left side of the 2-4. Usually, you try to hit the right side. Stacy Ryder with room for 244. Bad news is, it might not be enough. That's right. Lisa Wagner could shoot 259. And uh, right now, Stacy Ryder would like nothing better than to be able to shoot 250. A little more speed. Boy, she's just got to kick herself for that shot that she threw in the sixth frame. If she strikes there, she's in the midst of a six-bagger, and she's probably right there at the lead. Well, Stacy told me she's playing quite a bit deeper than she had been uh, throughout the week. She said they seemed to be hooking a little earlier for her. And uh, so she moved in. She says, I really wasn't this deep. Just two and nine in championship round play, and that tells the story of her career at this point in time. Ball hooking early. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. That's it. One mistake you get away with, and mm -hmm. two you don't. And uh, baseball card collecting. Anybody out there have any extra baseball cards? Want to send them to Stacy Ryder? I'm sure she'd uh, appreciate it. Interesting hobby for a lady pro bowler. Maybe she collects bowling cards. But she actually likes to play pool, too. <laughs> Lisa Wagner in the driver's seat now can just coast right into a title match showdown with our top seed, Debbie McMullen. 
Stacy Ryder, I think, had an excellent shot in this one tonight. But uh, splits in the sixth and the ninth have decided her fate. Meanwhile, Lisa just keeps chugging along. Might take a top seed for Stacy Ryder to actually win. She's had trouble from some of the lower positions. You know, it may take her to qualify number one and get loose and only have to win the, that one match. That's the easiest way to get the job done. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to lead the tournaments out here, though. That's the thing that was kind of interesting to me this week. Um, my eyebrows kind of raised when I saw that Debbie McMullen led the tournament. She's not known for, uh, as a player that shoots a lot of high scores. She's a very fine player, very accurate bowler. She'll grind it out on a tough condition with the best of them. But were you surprised that Debbie ended up leading the tournament this week? Definitely, Denny. Um, she bet she's been bowling very well in regionals, and she has led the doubles event. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she... She always looks ahead, and she's a very confident player. So, you know, she, everything went her way in all the rounds. I think Debbie runs into trouble on whether it be the morning round or the night round. So she has not been able to put it all together. But this week, it all came together for her. Ten-pin wiggles, but it's academic. Lisa Wagner is in a title match. Trying to win her second championship of the year and close the gap between she and Anne-Marie Dugan in the chase for player of the year. A lot at stake here in this title match. We have Debbie McMullen trying to win that first career title. And Lisa Wagner trying to close that gap for bowler of the year. I mean, that's like a rookie coming down the stretch trying to beat Nicholas in his prime. You know, I mean, it, it, that, that's not an easy thing to do. That's going to play on your mind a little bit, too. I mean, if the truth be known, I'm sure that Debbie would much have preferred to bowl any of the other four, or I should say the other three contestants tonight that she might have faced. Well, like I said, De Debbie's pretty confident, Denny, and she really feels like she's due to win. And if she has that attitude, then she could come out very aggressive. Oh, I think she'll do that regardless of what happens. She told me she's really bowling well right now, so. I don't think she's intimidated by too many players. Lisa Wagner, 235, and for Stacy Ryder, a solid performance this week. A tournament that might have been her first win had it not been for a big split in the sixth and another one in the ninth, but I guess you can say that about any tournament that you play in. Had an excellent shot, but it didn't work out for her this evening. And Stacy Ryder finishes third. When we come back, it's Lisa Wagner and Debbie McMullen for the title. Jam-packed house here at Don Carter Lanes in Rockford, Illinois, the home of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour. And uh, this lady has been very instrumental in promoting ladies' professional bowling for a long time. And a lane breakdown definitely has figured out lane eight, as we can see, seven and eight uh, looking quite the same. In search of career title number 28. And the last time she was in this championship match, she came out the winner. It was in the Santa Maria Classic earlier this year. She defeated Cheryl Daniels, 238 to 202. She'll take advantage when she gets to the championship match. Debbie McMullen's heart has to be pounding just a bit faster. I would definitely say so. Her last television appearance, Earlier this year in Alexandria, she defeated Leanne Barrett, and then she went on to lose to Kim Couture. Great opening, aggressive shot. That takes a little of the heat off. As a top seed, that first shot's got to be the toughest. Well, you've been waiting in the wings for an awful long time, Denny, and then you come out, you're, you are allowed six practice shots. You may take them any way you want them. Two on one lane, four on another, all six on one, or split them up three and three. Used a couple of different balls in the practice. Settled in on this one. It was a good choice. She struck on both lanes with it. Slot aloft. Ball comes high and sets in the pocket. So a beautiful double for Debbie McMullen to start the title match. Really, uh, Denny, a beautiful shot, but it appeared she got that ball a little inside a target. It held line. This is the type of line she has had throughout the week. I talked about the hold area in the center, and Debbie McMullen has used it to her advantage. That's why she averaged 229.9 this week for 42 games. That's a bunch. And so far, Lisa Wagner averaging 225 tonight for her two games. Plenty of speed. Oh, you knew that was going to happen. Well, we've settled in. 
to what looks to be a high scoring shot for the title. Are you getting your tap shoes on? No, <laughs> no not tonight. Nine thousand dollars for first and that beautiful hammer trophy. Debbie McMillan just trying to stay focused, not watching her opponent. Meanwhile, Lisa Wagner taking a re-rack. She started out with the first five strikes last game. Out of the gate early. That's the easiest way to win in the championship round. Easier to throw them early than it is late. First woman to reach $100,000 in earnings in a single season. Oh, great shot. Debbie McMullen. Waiting for a moment, up off the bench, realizing she's going to have to bowl the game of her life to beat Lisa Wagner here for this title. I think she is, Denny. 1990 Rookie of the Year. Been on tour now four years. Feels that she is due to win. She's going to have to work hard. You can see there she defeated Lisa Wagner in match play, but that was all on a different day. To maintain pace. And she does. Another high flush hit on lane eight. Debbie McMullen has extremely late timing. She starts with a four-step approach. Normally in the second step, her ball will be heading down, but hers actually is being pushed out. Here she is in her second step. The ball is pushed out. Realistically, the ball should be down here for someone that has a little bit earlier timing. Debbie McMullen again with that high backswing. She hits the line and then really pulls the ball through. She likes to have that hold in the center. Came around that shot a little bit and a solid 10 pin. Peg's looking on, applauds the 10 pin, but you know deep down inside she was hoping for a strike. Oh, you bet. A former member of the women's tour. I remember when I first uh, came out on tour, Peg McMullen was competing. Family tradition. As it showed up on the monitors, she is uh, Debbie's coach. Spare up. So McMullen starts with a three bagger, then gets tapped with the ten pin. And Lisa Wagner has the first three. Let's see what transpires here in the fourth for her. Eight career sanctioned, three hundred games. gaining confidence on this pair of lanes. You saw the first game she came out, she was searching a little bit. By game number two, she really had things under control. Bunch of 300s this week. Our top seed had one, so did the number two seed, Stacy Ryder. Jan Schmidt with a solid 10, Tish Johnson with a solid seven, of course. The ladies really threw some strikes. Whew. <laughs> Telephone numbers. Lisa Wagner not trying to get her fifth strike in a row. Looking for the light swish hit. Oh, my. Beautiful shot. Same way she started the last game with a five-bagger. Watch the pin action. Really revs the ball up here. The loft, the rotation, the lift. Five pins just going to saw out the seven. Down by 21. Oh, no, not the 810. Well, she'd been playing with the oil line, as you mentioned, as Debbie turn around with the biggest smile of the week. You know she has to be heartbroken. Ooh, she didn't get away with it that time. No, she didn't. And sometimes this is going to get you, Denny. When you're playing with that oil line, your ball just slides straight down. Not enough hitting power here. Trying to go for it. 8-10 left on the right-hand lane. And four years of pro, trying to change that national titles from none to one. 
and frog collecting. Uh, if you get a shot at her shoes, uh, you'll notice the Kermit frog lace holders. I think I have, Ryan has a pair of these, Denny. He does? <laughs> oh, light hit. Will it carry? No. This time the 8-pin stands, but the 7-pin, or I should say the 10-pin, wasn't along for the ride. Lisa Wagner head down, not watching her opponent, but Lisa with her nose to the grindstone has the first five and leads by 34. She could waltz into the end of this one. Well, six time, no, seven time Bowler's Journal All-American, six time WIBC All-American. She's been in this position many times before and she is going to take advantage of it tonight. She knows the shot is there for her and she is really, really bowling well. Very long span, holds the ball high. Look at the spread between her index finger and her middle finger. You can get a lot of rotation on the ball. But she steered that one a little bit, but got away with it in the sixth. So she's halfway home. When we talk about some of the resin equipment, Denny, this is a prime example of what happens. The six pin doesn't play in the channel. It pops out and gets the 10 on a shot like that where that might have just been a weak 10. This match will be out of the wood momentarily if she strikes one more time or a couple. Solid 10. Good shot. Good effort. Debbie McMullen says, well, <laughs> at least I've still got a shot here in the sixth frame. Seventh frame. I've still got a few left here before I get closed out of this one. It's got to be frustrating to lead a tournament and watch your opponent come out and throw the first six. <laughs> and that's tough to handle. Yes, it is. Just nothing you can do about it. Debbie McMullen's bowled a pretty good game. Left an 8-10 in the fifth. 10-pin in the fourth, 8-pin in the sixth, or she'd be right back in this thing. Well, there's no one that knows that better. Judy Sutar finished second many, many times before winning her first title. Big error right here by Lisa Wagner just to throw something away. Opening up the door for Debbie McMullen as she does not get the ball far enough over to the right. It hooks left. She's going, come on. Oh. And now you know that she's aggravated because she doesn't like to make mistakes like that, especially in a match like this. You've got the match won. Just finish it out. Basically, you're right. 31 pin lead. I'll tell you one thing right now. Debbie McMullen will not in any way, shape, or form give up. She's going to keep trying those strikes until they turn the lights out here at Don Carter Lanes. Well, you never know what's going to happen. Going for that light wall shot here is the head pin goes off the wall, hits the four pin. Four pin takes out the five. The head pin takes out the seven. She can still shoot 216. Lisa Wagner shooting at a 230 pace, though. Not so sure Lisa's going to give her anything else. How about it? Two pin. It wiggled for a moment and wouldn't fall. And Peg says, sure, sure. Won't fall this time. The next time it'll go down. There's a lot of similarities between Debbie and I, Denny, as I talked to her about leading that first tournament. She got any sleep the night before when I uh, was the top seed for the first time. Don Adamick threw the first six at me, shot 240. Oh, my. <laughs> well, I guess the, uh, the lesson to be learned is just stay after it. Keep It'll the happen. top five, and sooner or later, you'll win. Debbie McMillan, she'll win. Well, she and Stacy are both, they're just two really good players. I mean, you, you are surprised players of those caliber haven't had a chance to win on here, but on the other side of the coin, it shows you how much talent there is. It's not easy. There's a lot of talent and more coming, Denny, and with that added prize money next year, we are going to see them come out of the woodwork. Quick look at the size of the field, 72. And boy, these are some astronomical type numbers. Average to make TV, 224.3. Just to qualify, 216, that's a record. Yes, it is. Average to make TV, 224. Mm. Arden direct at the 710. Oh, 
Well, for Debbie McMullen now, she's down to 226 if she strikes. Lisa Wagner puts a strike up on the board here, and she's all but locked herself in. And I'm sure Kent Wagner, Lisa's husband, who is now currently the head mechanic at ERC Galaxy Lane, will be happy to get this phone call. <laughs> Remember, she won earlier, 93, at the Santa Maria Classic. That was way back in February. I know one thing, she's really throwing the ball well here tonight. Has opened up this lane pretty nicely. You and I talked about it early on. Uh, she's not going as direct as we have seen her through the years. Mm -hmm. Player like that, though, a reactive resin ball would have to make a difference to a player like Lisa Wagner, wouldn't you think? Definitely, Denny. Really have to help open the lane. Give give her, before where she is the more direct type of player, This the resin equipment is going to give her that much more hook and uh, put her right up there with the boomers, the, the Leanne Barrett, and the Anne-Marie Dugan. She's going to get back in to another, another factor of the game. Wheels coming off now for Debbie McMullen coming up as soon as we're done. A quick look at the NBA today here on ESPN. Frustrating to watch a top seed average almost 230 for 42 games and then end up with a second place finish. That's disheartening. Well, respectable strike here. She shoots 203. This one's a competitor though. She'll come back for more. Five career television appearances. Her average TV average is 194. Spare here gives her 193. <laughs> she just missed her average. <laughs> Frustrated right now. You can't, you just, it's hard to explain to the fans out there what goes through your mind as a top seed. But you hope to learn from the experience, take something away and come back a better player the next time around. And right now we have a very close race going in the Samstown Invitational for the Bowler of the Year. We have not seen it this fall, but it's here now. It sure is. Lisa Wagner with her second victory has now taken over the money lead. It's tied Anne-Marie Dugan with a couple of wins. Lisa is making a run. Well, she's got to be number one in points after this week. That's right. And she knows it. In the hunt for Player of the Year honors. Well, I'll tell you what, that Samstown tournament is going to determine more than likely what happens. She is a three-time Bowling Riders Association Women Bowler of the Year. Her last award coming in 1988. So five years ago, this lady was the Bowler of the Year, and it might happen again this year. Terrific performance tonight, one that we would suspect, one that we had come to expect most of the time, but for a few years there, rough times for this lady. And like you said, she worked extremely hard mm. to get back. Yep, it's been a long comeback for her. So I'd say it's complete right now. There's the exclamation point, 257. Lisa Wagner, the winner of the Hammer Midwest Open. And uh, I guess only rightfully so, perhaps the greatest of all time, winning here in the home of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour. Championship round finals of the Hammer Midwest Open are being brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste, it won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Head and Shoulders, Dry Scalp and Dry Scalp 2 in 1. Because beautiful hair can't have flakes. For the 28th time in her illustrious career, Lisa Wagner stands in the winner's circle, and uh, Stacy Summer has uh, some beautiful flowers to present you with. Thank you very much. It's been it's been great being here. What a pleasure. Thank you, Stacy. All right, flowers first. Now, now the trophy from John Wonders, the president of Foul Ball Enterprises. Lisa, congratulations on your good bowling all week. And on behalf of everyone at Faball, home of the hammer, we'd like to present this trophy to you for your bowling this week and your championship. 
Good bowling. Thanks. Great. You're going to need more hands. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I've been waiting a long time to win a hammer tournament. <laughs> and this is the first one, and I couldn't think of a better place for it to come. I won my very first title ever here. So this is really neat for me. History indeed does repeat itself. And now John Anderson, the general manager here of Don Carter Lanes, uh, has a check to provide. Well, it's been three years since the ladies have been here, and unless I get a promise that you're coming next year, <laughs> no, sir, this check stays right here. Oh, bet me. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, boy. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say hi to everyone at home. Hi, Ken. Hi, Mom, Dad. Uh, hi, Theo. Hi, everyone at Galaxy East. And uh, I'd like to congratulate the tour on signing with Sam's Town. That is truly historic for us and I'm so glad that, that they've stuck with us and waited for it to happen. I'm real glad to see it. And I'd like to especially thank Hammer for being with us for so many years and uh, it's, it was great fun to win this tonight. Oh, it's great. All right, Leila, question? Lisa, it's been five years since you were bowler of the year. Did you think you'd get in the race again? Well, I haven't been thinking about it too much. Uh, I've been struggling so much the last two to three years that I, I pretty much go frame to frame, believe it or not. I know a lot of people might think, you know, oh, well, she doesn't look nervous. She doesn't look, you know, tense or anything. I'm scared to death. And I'm really trying to deal with it, and I've worked harder than I've ever worked before. And it's hard. The truth comes out. <laughs> and yet, you have to feel sure. You've been fortunate. You've won 28 times. You have to feel, though, for a player like Debbie McMullen to average 230 and then have to go up against a player that has a pair of lanes lined up like you did. Uh, well, I, I definitely know how she feels because I've been there plenty of times myself. Yeah. So um, I, Debbie bowled awesome all week, and I actually did say to myself sitting in the chair there that if she wins tonight, it would be well-deserved because she out-averaged the field, and that's what I always look at. So uh, she bowled uh, great all week, and she was the one to beat. Okay, one prediction. Uh, you're in the hunt without question now for Player of the Year Honors. One big event left at Samstown. What about that one? Can you shoe it up and, and beat all of them in that one? Well, I'm going to work. I'm going to work on it. Um, I, like I said, I've worked harder than I've ever worked before, and uh, now's not the time to let down. So I'm going to uh, mentally and physically work probably harder than I've ever worked. Okay. Don't forget to join us for the season finale at Samstown because Player of the Year Honors, believe me, are up for grabs at this point in time. Thanks for joining us here from the home of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour this evening, Rockford, Illinois. The final stop on the 1993 LPBT Tour comes up in Las Vegas for the championship round finals of the Samstown Invitational, which will begin at 11.30 Central Time, Tuesday, November 23rd, from Samstown Bowling Center.